the opportunity to demonstrate the termination of our TCOM 600 with our TCP connector. The TCOM cable is a great choice if you have a need for a low passive litter mod and low loss. Or also a cable, we're just looking for a rugged cable. Maybe it's going to go through a lot of flexing. Some, some cases you may have both requirements in the same application, such as a cow, colt, cell center wheels, mobile communications truck. Good rugged cable for, less, for low pin. The cable only goes so far. You need a good quality connector for low pin and a good termination method to attain low pin. So first thing we're going to do, get started, and take our cutting tool, CCTO2 cutting tool, apply a little downward pressure, spin the tool around the cable, scribes through the jacket, the braid wires, scribes the center conductor, snaps off, leaves a nice round cable. Good place to get started. And then, just to make things a little easier, we take our silicone lubricant. That's because this happens to be a polyurethane jacket. Uh, I like to describe it as like, almost like a brake pad or sneakers on a gym floor. It's a little bit of friction, so a little bit of lubricant never helps, never hurts. Take the back nut, get that started over the cable, slide that back. Take the uh, collet, beryllium copper uh, collet, slide that back. You wanna take your little uh, bushing that has a gasket inside it. Slide that back onto the cable with the gasket facing the connector. We have a gland that also goes over and you can probably see there, there's the way it's orientated with the smaller diameter facing the connector. At this point, we take our ST-TCOM prep tool, our three-in-one prep tool. What this is gonna do is just gonna remove 10 millimeters of jacket from the cable. Like so. And at that point, we're gonna take these round wire braids, we're gonna fold them back. Like so. We're gonna take a safety razor, right up against the braids without with minimal pressure. And 360 degrees around, we're gonna just score this aluminum mylar aluminum tape, which is an interlayer. And then we just peel that right away, like so. That exposes a silver plated copper flat braid underneath. At that point, we just want to take the razor, just fan that out a little bit, those flat braids out. We want to fold those flat braids right over the round wire braids. At that point, we take our last bushing and we place it right over the core of the cable. We take our safety razor once again, just with a minimum amount of pressure and spin it 360 degrees around. Take it one, cut right along the axis, press down, twist it, pop that foam off. You have a deburr tool. If you go back to your ST tool, you have a deburr tool built in there. Just take the burrs off the center here. At that point, you go for your pin. And we have our PCT-600 crimp tool. It has three settings, N, 4.3, and 716 stin. We want to set it for uh, type N, which is the smallest, our smallest hole. We line up with that slot. You can place the pin in there. open all the way there we go Let's put it in there place it all the way on to the cable and fully depress the handles this tool has four indent pins 90 degrees apart making four indents very good way to, to uh, crimp onto the cable you have to be concerned sometimes with a hex crimp thermal coefficients depending upon where you're using the cable extreme cold this has been run through all kinds of testing, vibration, temperature shock. We have data if you're interested to back up this, this method of crimping the pit. We now have our 
connector at this stage here where we have a little exposed of that round wire, flat wire braid. And what I would, I would recommend, trim it a little bit at back with a pair of scissors. You don't, you don't have to trim it flush, but when you clamp the connector, you just want, don't want too much of that in your way. This happens to be a pair of stainless steel uh, scissors. So it cuts it out stuff pretty. You make sure you don't leave a stray brand braid or anything there. So you, this is this is where you're at. You take the front end of your connector, place it over the uh, connector there. Just push it. You bring that back end up a little bit. And this connector, what it would take is uh, two 22 millimeter wrenches. Here in our studio today, we don't have two 22 millimeter wrenches, we have one. So we'll take that one wrench and then we'll take an adjustable wrench and we'll tighten it back in. Now, I, I would say you wanna make that nice and snug. I know some people we're on a little more specification than that, and I would say roughly 60 to 70 inch pounds. And what you'll have is you have a connector that's very rugged. Uh, you're not gonna pull that off. You got these little teeth that bite into the jacket there. The mechanical transition is actually separated from the electrical transition by about three quarters of an inch. So if you're side loading this cable, you're not transmitting all that force to the electrical uh, transition. You're, you're capturing a lot of that in the back end. So therefore you get very good dynamic pin performance as well as static pin performance. We have this connector for the 600 available also in a 4.3 male and a 716 male. We also have that same series of connectors for our TCOM 400 and our TCOM 240. So we have a pretty good family there, a portfolio of low pin products and low pin cables. Like I said, it's not just the cables, the connector, it's the way the connector goes onto the cable. Thank you very much.